Hello, welcome to Featherwood Farm. Today we're gonna do kind of a full garden tour. It is late October. Everything is, you know, kind of dwindling. All have our autumn colors dying back. And I totally skipped September. It was a busy month, but there's still some pretty things to see in the garden. I actually love when it looks like this, when everything's about to go to rest. Minus the hostas. The hostas obviously leave something to be desired in the autumn, but they all behind back. This is the Sun King Aurelia, and I'll share a photo, but this is the first year for me um, that it produced its little berries. Obviously, it's also dying back. We just had our first frost the beginning of this week. The asters all have their seed heads, which I don't cut anything back. Um, over here, I would readily welcome some of these asters kind of self-seeding, and I can play with them as I like. The goat's beard also getting ready to die back to the ground. Things that are still kind of holding on, the hookahs. I'll find the tag for this variety, I can't uh, quite recall. These are some of the um, gourds that I grew, squash that I grew. I think these are all winter blush. And over here, the Tough Stuff Hydrangea actually still has a couple blooms on there. It's also a bit of a mess. Uh, kind of throughout the yard, you'll notice I have plants still in their containers. I've been doing a lot of, you know, clearance shopping at all of the local nurseries, the big box stores, kind of gathering things at really great prices. So this is a uh, lemon meringue baptisia that we'll get in. A couple for Scythia, snowball viburnum. Uh, tipped over is a pink dogwood. And then I have two different types of ajuga down there. And a few arborvitae, which I obviously have a heavy deer presence and they love arborvitae. I did get the Western variety, which they're supposed to like a little bit less. Um, this one's not a Western, that's an Eastern. But I'm thinking that because I got them for $10 a piece, it was kind of worth the risk. And I would see if I can managed to keep the deer off of them through a combination of using like the fishing line, the clear fishing line around the garden beds, as well as, um, you know, the deer repellent that I spray on. So I tried staking these ones up. They still toppled over. So I will be taking this plant out, this aster, and putting it in a different location, as well as that Sun King Aurelia back there. Um, it got a little bit crowded out. Everything else in the front here, the hostas, the ferns, and the few hellebores that I have, they all did quite well. So I think get these two plants out, put them in the back of the border. I'm thinking possibly along the fence over here. Should work out better. There's the limelight hydrangea. Uh, these are the anemones. Obviously the flowers have since passed and we're left with these really cute little kind of balls. I did put in a proud berry coral berry. And these are the, I believe, low scape aronias, and they just have beautiful autumn foliage, kind of a blazing red. You see the kind of line of them right here. So once those get a little bit bigger, fill out a little bit more, it'll be really nice. And look at the astrontia. We even still have an astrontia bloom. I put in a Yuki cherry blossom, Dutsia. 
on this corner and over here I have um, a US native it's not the Chinese version uh, wisteria I believe it's called early amethyst I'll double check that and I'm hoping you know that it'll kind of grow up here and I'll put more um, twigs across the top for it to kind of cascade over hopefully we can get that trained to do that and these two right here are the taller I think it's low scape hedger I believe aronia and so you can see that same really kind of fiery autumn color bobo and that is a limetta the witch hazel also actually has pretty fall foliage color So that's quite lovely. Everything in here is just covered with the elm tree leaves. And let's see, this is the jade butterfly ginkgo starting to get its autumn color turning yellow. And so, you know, this is a lot of shade plants toward the back, a lot of hostas, um, Brenneras, Solomon seal, and, you know, they're died back mostly already. So not much to see there. It would be nice to maybe get a few more shade tolerant boxwoods kind of tucked in there to give a little bit of evergreen interest. My Golden Shadows dogwood is starting to get the lovely pink leaves. And the deer came through here and did some nibbling. So the stems of this hibiscus remain. <laughs> I took out those um, banana cream daisies and I actually think next year I'm going to take out these sanguisorbas. I don't think they're liking this spot. They just really didn't do much. So I'll put them over in the red bud grove garden. And I'll put an image up of these. This is the Eupatorium rugosum chocolate and you can see just a few blooms kind of left but really really lovely plant one of my favorites this is a spent dahlia and just this whole tangled web of cat mint right there um, in the front all of these echinaceas are gone over and as you can see the goldfinches, especially um, some bluebirds, some chickadees have just been feasting on the seeds. These are those gladiolus bulbs that I found very late in the season in the workshop and got in the ground and they grew their foliage but it just wasn't enough time for them to bloom but I think I will try to dig those up and save those bulbs. And the tiny wine nine bark is just looking glorious. And I don't think I have shared yet. Um, this is a Yoshino cherry tree that we got put in. Obviously it doesn't look like much right now. She's losing most of her leaves but pretty excited for that. Hopefully we have some lovely cherry blossoms next spring. All right, now we'll move across the driveway. And over here I have been expanding the beds. So 
I just did sheet mulching uh, using cardboard I had on hand as well as contractor paper and the wood chips from a chip drop that I got which was actually one of the best chip drops. There was a lot of leaf mulch in there as well. Um, so I did get some of the new plants that I picked up put in the ground. So this is a Nico Blush Dutzia and it has a darker foliage right now in the autumn and darker stems, really pretty. So that should be lovely in the spring. And I don't have this planted yet, but I think this is where it's gonna go. Um, it's a Camia Cyparis, I believe. I think it's called Tempelhof. Double check that. Peony foliage is still holding on. Get that cut back eventually. I don't cut back much stuff, but I will remove probably a lot of the hosta foliage and the peonies. This is an instant karma elderberry that I picked up on clearance. Uh, they have variegated foliage and they get quite large. So I'm thinking it'll kind of round out, you know, this whole corner of this bed here. And these are a few Maimone Wigellas under one of the red buds. Still a few red Beckia blooms holding on. Here is a smaller Western Arborvitae specimen that I put in before I found those other ones on clearance that were much larger. Um, this is a spring grove variety. It's a proven winner's plant. And I've had this in the ground, I want to say three weeks approximately. And yeah, the deer haven't touched it yet. I don't want to be too hopeful, but it's looking good so far. And I don't have my string up yet, so hopefully that's a promising sign. The spirea is still looking lovely. We have this little new foliage growth there that's contrasting. I finally got the, I believe, Golden Mops Camia Cyparis out of its planter, put that in the ground, so fingers crossed. I did have four Madrona sedums here, but the deer just, regardless what I do, eat them down, unfortunately. So I think all the sedums that are in this bed I'm going to pull out. And right here is, obviously not in the ground, um, a double take peach quince, which I'm putting to the back of this border because I know that the plants themselves after they flowered are kind of rangy. And I'll share a image of this as well, but this is the autumn gold ginkgo we got uh, last month, I believe. She's been in the ground for probably four or five weeks or so. And I'm, I'm so excited for this to grow up and to just have a much larger canopy of kind of this golden ground cover of leaves fallen. It's so beautiful. And also not in the ground yet, um, three, Double play kazoo, I think they're called double play blue kazoo. Okay, um, but I'm thinking we'll round out this corner. And so this is another area that I've expanded, sheet mulched, put the wood chips down, and it's basically gonna butt up to the um, kind of tractor trail and block that from view from the house in the front of the yard. This doesn't look like much. Um, the deer came before I could put the spray on these and ate the living, the top half that was like living and still in bloom and green. But these are um, three asters. I wanna say Almapachki. So they'll have beautiful, vibrant pink blooms. They also really went after my black tower elderberry. 
which is quite unfortunate. I don't know why they went after it so hard. They went after the lemony lace ones in the front too. But here you can see the mess of sedums that they just keep eating, keep eating. So I think I have to accept that that's a losing battle and the sedums, regardless of what I try to do to protect them, the deer will eat. And again, these Rudbeckias are still, uh, still holding on. They are the stars of the autumn show. In the front here, these are the blue speedwells. I can't remember offhand the variety. And then I have two Maynite salvias. And I was not happy with how any of them performed this year. I know that salvias, clay isn't their favorite soil, so I'm hoping that that was it, but I think I'm just yanking all of these plants out. And Brandon <laughs> gets so upset about um, me just yanking plants and tossing them in the compost. So he says that we should just set up in the back of the property, like a garbage garden where we just put it all on the ground and let it do what it wants to do. I don't know if I'm gonna do that, but. I appreciate the sentiment. Right there we have one lone daisy. I was hoping to get, her, get a better second flush of daisies after I deadheaded these rounds, um, the first round. And I was a little disappointed, but we'll see how they do next year. <clears throat> and then same, these are the rose dimension salvia they did a little bit better they they performed better than the main night salvias did and like if you see we still have a few blooms that are holding on um so i'm gonna keep these ones in one more season see how i feel about them i just i don't know if they're doing it for me so I kind of reworked this side as well. Oh, actually, let me back up. Um, so yeah, I filled in right here, sheet mulched, applied wood chips uh, to connect these two beds. So it's next, next year I'll edge everything and make it look cleaner and pretty, you know, large swoop there. And then I think I will keep this a grass path at least for now, that's the plan. Um, I also got my globe blue spruce out of its pot and put it in the ground a few weeks ago now. And uh, she's not dead. So hopefully she stays alive for me. I've mentioned before my horrible, horrible luck with putting basically anything coniferous in the ground. So yes, this is an area that I've kind of reworked. Got that in the ground. I put in some echinaceas, I believe mellow yellows and white swan or powwow white. Shoot, now I can't even remember. So we'll see next year. Um, and I also put in a few iris in the back there um, one was my friend Jonathan, which is a redder tone, and another was October Splendor, I believe, which was more of a pastel, and both of them are reblooming, so I should get a spring flush and an autumn flush. Right here is one lonely Caryopteris plant. I've never grown these before, um, so I just got the one to see how it would do. I got it because at the nursery it was covered in bees, so figured that would be something I would like to have in the garden. Right here is some variety of switchgrass. I wanted to say that it might have been Shenandoah, but that's taller than a Shenandoah, so it might be a North Winds, but looking lovely nonetheless. So this area I still will be reworking in the spring, I want to kind of bring in some shorter plants, 
maybe something two foot tall and under to kind of underplant these pycnanthemums with. I think it needs that. These coreopsis actually did well. They were getting crowded out by some nepetas. I yanked the nepetas. Um, I put in a straight species Baptisia here, and actually I put in another one on the back side over there on the other side of that switchgrass. And as we can see, the deer have already checked this out. Um, and I will move this uh, standing ovation service berry. It has been horribly unhappy here. It didn't like the other spot I had it in. So I'm going to, I believe, put it in the backyard near where I'm growing another um, type of service berry because that one is happy and thriving. Over here is another example of my bravery. So this is a fluffy arborvitae, which is another Western variety. As you can see, it's kind of a more chartreuse and lemony foliage color, which I think will look quite lovely. And that's been in the ground, yeah, for at least a month now and hasn't been touched yet. This is the reblooming lilac. The culver's root and liatris all kind of gone over. Here is the um, pearl glam calicarpa. Got a few berries. It actually had a lot more, so I think something you might have been picking at the berries. Interestingly, the one that's in the ground, um, when the frost came, started dying back a little bit quicker. And I picked up another on clearance right here. And as you can see, it is doing better. So, interesting observation. And here is the quite large expansion of this bed. So now these two come out at about the same uh, length and just kind of placing around having fun with where I think I want things to go this I'm really excited about it's a creme de mint dogwood so variegated foliage another ginger wine nine bark because those are my favorite um, over here is a Zuzu cherry. It's a fastidiate cherry. It doesn't get quite tall. I'll have to double check. Um, but it only gets, I believe, four foot wide. Right here, a wine and spirits wigella, which has a darker foliage and white flowers in the spring. And I've never really been a fan of butterfly bushes, but at the local nursery, um, when I was clearance plant shopping, they were giving them away for free with every purchase. So I picked this one. It is um, Miss Pearl. And let's see. Oh, we have a web. Four to five foot tall and wide. So we'll see how that does. Yeah, I think it's going to be uh, nice. I think the expansions are going to be really good. Obviously, the edges are looking rough. I'll clean that all up in the spring. Um, I just kind of needed to get it done. But that is what it looks like right now. And moving into the cut flower garden. Actually, let's take a moment and look because these sweet shrubs <laughs> I love how they look they're so pretty it's such a beautiful pop of yellow flanking the garden I still have yet to kind of designate this as a, a growing space as a bed I will in due time um, big changes in here 
we are going to turn this back into, or not back into, but we are going to turn this into an orchard. And while the trees are still young, I'll interplant kind of in between the rows, um, some cut flowers, but we will be relocating those to a different area. And I'll share that in a later video. Right here, we have a plum and we need to get a pollinator complaint, a pollinator companion right here. So that'll happen in the spring. In the front, we have two peaches. And then uh, just this week, I planted in these rows, um, let's see, it'll be daffodils on the outside and then in the center, peonies. And I think I have another peony right here at the end of this bed, actually the end of kind of all three of these rows. In the center in between the peach and the plum are more daffodils and at the end are more daffodils. And then over here in this row is daffodils on the outside and tulips trenched in the center. So this, this little corner that is done um, is, is gonna look absolutely beautiful in the spring. And I'm keeping in the ground for now. I'll cut them back soon, um, but the fever few because these should be perennial in my zone. And I'm thinking I'll save some of these plants and kind of put them into the cottage garden area, as well as some of the yarrows that I have growing. Larkspur, which was in the back, was supposed to be perennial in this area. Um, so I'll see if those hang on. And then everything else is obviously done for, well, actually, the straw flower patch still looks pretty good, but um, I'm slowly moving my way back and yanking everything out and cutting it all down. Look at how bright pink those stems are on the amaranth. That was the mira where it kind of tasseled. Really pretty. And then, again, my apologies for the mess. It's very much an in-progress thing going on here. Um, this is gonna be all the apple trees so we have three in the ground. Uh, one more is gonna go right there. Uh, got the whole dug. And then the back half is gonna be where the pears and the cherries go. And we also picked up on our big tree buying excursion, um, two chestnut trees. And I put those in the animal pen and you'll probably have noticed that like all of my beds need a really thorough weeding and it's going to be kind of nice in the next few days so i might come out here and do that um, i've been moving a lot of the echinaceas out you see all my little holes and putting them in different areas uh, to make room for the peonies that i had planted they were getting crowded out so one here here there uh, another one over there. And honestly, I probably will um, probably not get to it this year, but next spring I probably will pull out these red beckias and the rest of the echinaceas and get those moved. I think the ladies' mantle will stay. We'll see. I say that now, but... Um, and then through here, I planted a bunch more daffodil bulbs. And let's just take a second to notice all of the walnuts smashed on the ground. They are everywhere. It's painful to walk on them. I got one of these little rollers to kind of pick them up but I fill a five gallon bucket full of walnuts in you know a minute it's exhausting work moving into the cottage garden it doesn't look like much right now but kind of reworked some things in here I picked up another hibiscus 
deer got that one. A couple of daisies planted in. I moved some of my hookahs in here. Some of the echinacea um, that I moved went back in that corner behind the ginger wine nine bark. I'm gonna pull this um, lilac out and put that in a different location in the spring. I'm just not liking it there so much. And I left some uh, foxglove in. These are my iris, which I don't think I ever shared when they were in bloom. So I'll see if I have a photo and I'll put that up. This is the ice crystal oak leaf hydrangea. Starting to get some really lovely autumn color. Again, this didn't bloom this year. They bloom on old wood and the deer ate it down last year. So no blooms. I divided my phlox plant that I have, got a portion of it here, portion of it here, defoliated as you can see. Uh, what else? We have a peony right here, I believe this is a sorbet. And I also put in this grass, it was called um, Little Tickler. I think it's a, an oat grass, I'll double check that. Um, I have a few more that I haven't put in, but I really like the look of them. And right here is a wee white hydrangea. So yeah, looks a little raggedy right now, but should look nice next year. The lavender raised beds are doing really well. Um, all of this mess is pulled out in front of the greenhouse because I'm working in there. That'll be another video I'll share. Um, reworking this side as well. Uh, here is a Wabi Sabi Viburnum. It's a compact one. Limelight Hydrangea. And on either sides of this little path, kind of curving, I have La Belle Epoque tulips. I'm going to keep them in the ground, fingers crossed, that I can keep the deer out of here, the rabbits away, and they'll do well. The mock orange put on so much growth this year. It doesn't look like uh, much because, again, leaf loss, but I'm excited about that. Hopefully next year it'll bloom for me. I put in the ground one of my topiary Norway spruce. And then right here is the first macrophylla hydrangea in our garden. Brandon picked this one out. It is a Monrovia variety, Seaside Serenade, Cape May. Um, and kind of before the frost came, it had really, really beautiful uh, foliage color as well. You can still kind of see like tinges of pink and red. And let's see, it's getting its buds set up. So I'm hoping that we'll have blooms on this next year. And you'll see I got the Ceramicoot painted with that contrasting color, which I really like the look of. Sorry, I'm tripping all over everything. Tripping over my mess. And then moving into the raised beds. This bed I'm not really gonna mess with until next year. It's got some thyme still in it. One lonely lavender plant, the mint. Um, this one is just cleared away. I just harvested the last, well, not just, but harvested the last of the onions that were growing. And, oh yeah, okay, a couple more lavender plants. Um, this is actually the Lysianthus, these little green pokes that are still holding on. Rosemary plant and some parsley, oregano. And then this was the bed with the dahlias in it. So I'm waiting uh, until a little bit later before I pull up the tubers. But in this side, these first three beds, I have uh, between I think six and 800 tulip bulbs in each one. 
and I'll post a separate video kind of sharing what bulbs I picked, what varieties, and kind of where they went. Um, but they all got topped off with the farm-made compost. It's not entirely finished, but it has been rotting for about a year now, so it's completely safe to put in here. And this will act to obviously feed the soil, but also as a mulch. And this is all that I have left of the bulbs to plant. It's probably like 50 daffodil bulbs. And then I just got um, the remaining peony roots. So I'll get those in today. And there's my glorious mess. And let's show you. Oh, I also pulled up the lily bulbs. So I have to find homes for those. And these are some of the clearance plants that I got that I didn't get in the ground yet. A couple more snowball viburnums, which I'm actually um, going to take. We have a we have a shack up north um, on the Muskegon River, and I want those on the property up there. Uh, Rainbow Sensation Wigella, another of those Spring Grove Arborvitae, some Nepidas. This is a Father Gila, which talk about lovely autumn foliage. So beautiful. Uh, Velvet Fog Smokebush, which, you know, just looks like a mess of twigs right now. More of those grasses. A couple of boxwoods. All of these hostas will also go up north. I got a few more white ones. Veronica. Um, another one of those Dutzias, bunch of hookeras, morajuga, and a few geums. So, lots of things that have to go in the ground, have to find homes for, and that'll all happen next year. And so actually what I do with these, um, this is what I did last year as well when I picked up clearance plants at the end of the season. Um, I have a few more of these raised beds that I ordered and that just came in. So I'm going to assemble them and they're going to go on the other side um, of the back row where it was open. And I'm going to assemble those. I'm going to put the plants in there and kind of heal them in with a bunch of leaf mulch. I did that last year and didn't lose anything. Everything survived. They were insulated by the leaves. So. Moving into the courtyard. These are, I think, Lemon Burst. Let's see. Yep, Lemon Burst Arborvitae. They don't get very big. I have another one um, just setting over there. It's in its pot still, but I'm going to put it right here. I love <laughs> this switchgrass, but it's clearly too big for the area. Um, every rain, she kind of falls out and her structure kind of expands, blocks the door. So that'll just go in a different location, but we'll do that in the spring and get the other one planted right here. And so they'll flank this door. I planted, oh goodness, I can't remember which ones, but um, some tulips around this corner here, as well as around this corner. This is a one, another one of those Temple Hoff um, Camia Cyparis. So I believe these are slow growers, but it should slowly grow to fill out the space, like four foot wide, eight foot tall, something like that. And I think I'm gonna come through here and mess around with this area again. You might recall I had the culinary sages over here. I yanked those as well as one of the um, gold tufted grasses. It just died back. I'm going to yank that grass out as well. But yeah, just rework this a little bit until I feel right with it. And then just real quickly, we'll walk through the fire pit garden. And I think that will be the end of this very long tour. This is the gray smoke bush. Again, just my favorite. Might be one of my favorite plants in the garden. It is beautiful. 
every season. I mean, winter, obviously, it's not much, but the other three seasons, it's just absolutely beautiful. One lonely flower left on this Vernonia. And the goldfinches and other little birds, again, are just going to town on these echinaceas. So it's really pretty in the fire pit garden in the autumn because of all the grasses. There's just so much movement and the sound that accompanies it. Back here is going to be a new addition next year. This is early amethyst um, beautyberry. So it's a different variety from the ones that I have in the red bud grove. Um, it has a lighter more chartreuse foliage color, which I really liked. And so I think that I'll probably bring this bed edge out a bit next year. This is one garden that I feel like I don't have to rework a whole lot. I, I'm actually fairly happy with what I did. There's a few things here and there that, you know, I'll tweak, like I'm pulling out the salvias that were up here as well as these little seed nepetas, but other than that, it, it's pretty solid. And so that is it for our late October garden tour. Thank you for joining me, and we'll see you next time.